getting back to the to the, the, the trade, just I just want to start with the trade. Yeah, we, sure. We were recently bemoaning uh, Beauvillier's lack of production this season, and we kind of threw him in the same camp as Connor Garland, where you look at the, the registered shots, they've had scoring chances, but the finish wasn't there. Um, you know, the Canucks will keep Connor Garland, and I think Connor Garland is a more useful player than Beauvillier. I think he does more things. Like, I get frustrated when I watch Garland because – of his finish and like he just doesn't have a very hard shot and the puck's not going in for him right now so that's frustrating but I think he does he does he I think Garland has more of an ability to drive a line Mm -hmm. than Beauvillier does he does more things per 60 he's got a higher things per 60 (laughs) great stat things per 60 he does things so thanks to Taylor Hall's injury and again whatever the heck happened with Corey Perry the Canucks Pounced on an opportunity to dump Beauvillier's entire $4.15 million cap hit. Would have been better for the Canucks to have done that trade over the summer? Yeah, but it probably wasn't there. They probably weren't able to make that move without any, without adding any sweeteners. And the Canucks have kind of been like, we're not doing sweeteners for these deals, right? Mm-hmm. And they found a chance, and good for them, because they didn't have to add anything. They got rid of Beauvillier's entire cap hit not because of really anything that they did strategically they did get a little bit lucky but they made the deal they called up chicago they realized like hey chicago's got a problem right now sure and they're going to be a place where maybe they might want a veteran forward who's like a good guy in the room um and and for chicago this might make sense in addition to bringing in someone to help Beauvillier and someone to help, or not Beauvillier, Bedard, someone to help beyond, you know, Taylor Hall and Corey Perry, because maybe Beauvillier goes there and has a, a, a really good stretch for 20 or 30 games. And then the Blackhawks are able to say, okay, we'll trade him at the trade deadline and we'll retain salary and we'll get even more than the fifth round pick that we were able to, that we had to give up to, to get Beauvillier. So hopefully it works out for everyone involved, and that includes Beauvillier, who comes from the Islanders to Vancouver and plays well for the first part. And I remember people being like, I'd rather have Beauvillier than Horvat. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, that's – that's all right, you're, you're emotional right now. You're lashing out at Bo yeah. Horvat. But, you know, ultimately Beauvillier didn't really have a spot in the lineup that worked for him. The question now is – what do the Canucks do with their newfound cap space? Because you know they're not Phil they're Kessel. Not, <laughs> they're not savers. The Canucks aren't savers. They're no. gonna they're gonna they're gonna use this money. They're gonna use this cap space as soon as they're gonna, they they're gonna buy municipal bonds with it. You, well, it, you assume it's Ethan Bear, right? Like, well, look, it's worth noting that Cole McWard and Noah Juleson were both in the lineup yesterday, and f- for the record, um, Hughes and Hronick weren't together. Like I, I, I didn't expect to see that. Yeah. Uh, maybe I wasn't paying attention. Did everyone expect that? But uh, Hughes and Hronick were not together for the full game, and maybe that's because the coaching staff was like, <laughs> we, you know, we got McWard and yeah. Noah Juleson. Um, it's you part know, of the committee approach. But Ian Cole was to, in there trying too, to bring Hronick's uh, re-signing price down. But yeah, maybe they're trying to bring. <laughs> Her- yeah, maybe they. Maybe forty they, chess over here. <laughs> maybe management heard our show the other yeah. day. It was like, oh my god, we, we're not going to be able to afford Hronick. Yeah, split those um, guys up. So Ethan Bear is the obvious choice, but nothing's done yet, and it remains to be seen when he'll be ready to play. Yeah. Like, I'm sure we're going to get some more Ethan Bear updates now, but like, is he even close to being NHL ready? On Canucks Talk yesterday, Sat and Dan spent a considerable amount of time talking about the long-term projection as it would pertain to Ethan Bear mm-hmm. and trying to do a realistic one. And realistically, you're going to have to, one – Get him signed, which means he's healthy enough to participate at a proper level. Like, you can't just sign him and then have him do the same skating regimen that he's doing right now. Then you're talking about how long is it going to take to get a guy up to speed in the NHL, and not just for a run-of-the-mill NHL team, a team that has playoff aspirations, that is fighting tooth and nail for points because they want to get in the postseason. Well, we keep hearing 